Alright, so to start out, if I could get you all to just kind of look around at all the different woods around us. Kind of think about the tree. Think about, are all the trees, do they look the same? Are they different? Um, so, did anybody, say, did anybody here think all these trees look the same? No. So, yeah, that's right. They're all, they're all fairly different, so that means that they would have a lot of different uses. You wouldn't use one tree for the same thing that you would use as the, as the other tree. And so we're kind of we're kind of going to talk about that today about how all the different trees will have different um, advantages for ourselves and other things that would be in the world. Okay. Before we get into um, what we're doing today, I kind of want to go over what we've previously learned in this uh, in this class. Um, we first talked did a little course on using a compass on how to navigate, use with azimuth and all that, and Casey will be reviewing that a little bit later. And we also talked about tree identity. Uh, there are different types of local trees in Georgia that you see, like uh, the American Red Oak, the Eastern uh, Red Cedar, Eastern um, Red Bowl, the um, American Beech, the Northern Red Oak, I've already mentioned that. Uh, but they all have different uses um, in our society for medicine, um, construction, uh, even paper, anything like what we're doing today, what we're writing on, anything uh, these trees are involved in our lives. If you wanna... Yeah, so we are going to be using the compasses today, and um, we're going to hand out uh, five people will get one, and I'll just uh, go like a little review on how we would use these. So you'll see in here, this is the compass, and what we'll do is we'll put it up about this far away. We'll be able to use the mirror compass, and we'll find the red arrow and move our move our wheel here so that the red there are two red lines here, and that we want to line up the red arrow in that. It can kind of be seen as a school bus, and you're parking it between there and the parking spot. Mm -hmm. And then whenever you find that, you'll see all around here are the azimuth points. Um, 90 degrees, 150 degrees, um, just as the points are kind of the directions which you'll be going on. And does anybody have any questions about um, using the compass? If, if, if so, I can um, come help you out personally and we'll get it going. All right, so today you're going to be working in partners. Um, we set up like a little course for y'all to go through. Um, so we have two starting points. We'll have three teams over here and two over there. They're marked by the flagging tape, so that's where you're going to start. And then you're going to um, have a certain distance that you need to go. So you'll have a measuring tape, you'll be able to pull it out, um, and then you'll have an azimuth that you need to find. And then it, if it lines up perfectly, which it should, <laughs> you'll get right um, in front of a tree. And then we have some tree descriptions, and then you'll just read it, kind of figure out like what you think it is. Um, then you'll come back and kind of talk about what you think that tree could be used for specifically, and then everybody will kind of give their input, and we'll have a little bit of a group discussion about that. Okay, great. All right, so if everybody could partner up, we will get you a tape measure and a compass. I believe it's going to be five groups yeah, of two. five groups of two. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, good. Okay. So y'all are going to be starting at point two, which is right down there. So it's like a stake with fighting tape, and then you'll find your atoms Thank you so much. All right. I'll meet you back later. Okay. Okay, y'all will be coming at the tree mark right there. We have an azimuth of 38 to 30 degrees from that tree line up to the back tree. Thank you. And we will kind of walk around with y'all. They need a. Okay, we don't have any questions. Yeah, because uh, it was our number. Okay. Yeah. All right, so y'all are off the tree. Good job. Just try to find that and then pull you on that. Yeah, that's a good And then. A little cardinal out there calling, I hear. Where do you want to go? Um, 
Um, oh, wait, we're going to the side. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can go down there and you can too. And Mary Claire, I'll stay with you for a little bit, and then I'll go down there and check on that team with my video. Cardinal back there singing to us, a little male cardinal. Sounds kind of like a bomb dropping. Doo, doo. Like, Cardinals are mean. They can be I mean, can't they? Yeah. Catch. Got that big beak, they'll get you. Like, <laughs> they'll like, get you, yeah. They would try to put little uh, sticks in their mouth to make them shut up and not bite, okay. and they would just clomp onto the stick and they wouldn't <laughs> let go. They're like little pitbulls. That's a pretty good idea to do. There you go. Okay. Climb down this way, check on this team. Got some turtles out there. All right. We need a drone for this kind of stuff, don't we? Just fly right on over. <laughs> When you're watching this part, you can just fast forward for maybe 30 seconds or so while I walk along the water. <laughs> All right. That's a good idea. Like, you have 50 feet to go. 52 feet. 52. So, for example, like if you if your pace was exactly two feet, you know, you would take 26 steps to the 52 feet. Mm -hmm. But you know, we didn't want to make you have to do that today. Just yeah, I'll hold this and you go and then I'll take it. Maybe a little difficult. Okay, we're well, exactly right there. Right? This team's ID'd a tree, huh? Mm -hmm. So they found the tree and then they have to identify it? Is that right? Okay, good, good. Five to pick from. Okay. Two wide open. Good, very good, very smart. You Not too overwhelming. Oh, I know what it is. It's the red bud. Yep. <laughs> Just think about um, how we can use a red bud and then when we get back up, uh, we'll, we'll kind of discuss that. Very good. You saw those pretty flowers down there on that tree, is it? Yeah, those purple flowers. Harbinger of spring. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get it? 
That's the that's the tree. Yeah, of course. Okay. That's the tree of Oconee County too. The red bud. Yeah, that's. I didn't know the county had a tree until a few years ago, and it does. <laughs> red bud. <laughs> I don't know if they do. That's a great question. I don't know. I, somebody told me Red Bud's Oconee County tree, and it was in our little Oconee County magazine. I thought, well, I guess every county has a tree. I don't, I don't know. This is one tree just in the middle of the county. This is our tree. That's right. This Red Bud. That's great. So they've gone over to that young tree there and they have to identify it? Okay. And there's uh, there's there are five trees on there for them to pick from. Good. They said sure, it was sure, important sure. giving them five ferns. That, well, yes. That would have been something. But the next layers up could be. You know, a few weeks from now that could be. Sure, loblolly, short leaf. Slash, long leaf, Virginia. Could be a lot of, yeah, a lot of different. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those shorter needles they have. Kind of scruffy looking too compared to these guys. Good. Do you have a hypothesis? Do we also need to know what we could use it for? Yeah, just kind of think about from what we've learned in class. What do you think that your, that your tree could be used for? What would we use? Right. That's great. All right. Everybody's doing great down here. <laughs> Get it figured out, team. Hey, did they do it, Mr. Austin? They get it figured out. All right. Oh, there you go. That's great. These look like vulture feathers. I see these black vultures and turkey vultures flying around here. Very good. Oh, is that right? There's like a couple of spread out. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, sometimes they sit in these trees and kind of preen themselves. So it might kind of just fall down there. And, you know, yeah. Good. That's good. I was looking at them, just watching the wind cut across. The, isn't that pretty? How that is? Just look at that. Yeah. Yeah, and that wobble yeah, together all sitting over there sunning. We all done over there, Everybody ready to come together? All right. Okay, good, good. find their tree? Yes. So I guess we'll start um, from the right here and we'll kind of we'll, we'll talk about what tree you had, how you identified it, and then maybe some uses that you could have thought up for it. So what was your tree? Okay, we had an eastern redbud and 
it gave the type of leaves, but it doesn't have leaves out yet, but they have cordate or heart-shaped leaves. And um, it notes that in the spring, you can notice it by its dark pink flowers. And so that was one of the first things we noticed. And they're very bright and one of the first things to bloom. So they're one of the only trees blooming right now. Um, and you want to talk about that? Yeah, so for uses, uh, the major one is aesthetics. It's a very common mm -hmm. tree to plant it ornamentally. Um, and that is also a leguminous tree, so nitrogen at least at some level. Mm, that's right. Yes, we, we kind of thought the same thing for uses. Um, you may not see it as commonly in forestry. I know we didn't really mention it in forestry as we were more focused towards pine trees because that, that's what the industry is in Georgia. But there are some human uses, and you'll see them all over backyards for aesthetic purposes. So Very nice. Uh, we'll go over the next group. We had Eastern Red Cedar. Yeah. Um, we determined it because, like, the bark is, like, shreddy. I think it's. I think that's the idea. Yeah. To drive away some yeah. some things that we can get in. And um, I know red cedar is also not, you know, the most common tree in forestry, but they do have uses like that. Um, and a lot of people like cedar furniture because of its smell. Another thing is, um, some people with animals will use it for uh, shavings, but yeah. you have to be careful right. because the oil can kind of irritate some animals. Yeah. Also Good use that tree for also kind of like the red pulp over there for uh, cough medicines, joint pains, and bronchi bronchi yeah. bronchitis. Good. Right? Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, there's Good. a few interesting facts about that tree that I had no idea red cedar could be used for that. So. Mm -hmm. A lot of really? a lot of different varied uses that you may not think about. All right. So we'll go with uh, y'all's group. Did you find your tree? And we have the American beech tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really smooth. It's a kind of a, a giveaway in those. Help it out. Any any uses of it that you can think of? Uh, we talked about different types of furniture, cabinets. Um, I know some sporting equipment is made using. Um, and then I think some instruments are also made. I think that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they use it to make railroad ties. Mm -hmm. um, they usually do that, and they do. Yeah, furniture, cabinets, paneling, a lot of stuff for construction and all that, mm -hmm. so it's a good tree. Hardwood. Okay. Last a long time. All right, so our last group. Um, we had a loblaw and pine tree, and we knew that because it had, like, some pine needles on there that were green, and they were in clusters of three. Um, and then it had, like, the dark colored bark as well. Mm -hmm. And it smelled fragrant. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, the loblolly can be used for any, the two main things for forestry, which would be, you know, boards and then pulpwood. But I would say definitely any of these are a bit too small to be used for boards quite yet. So we got all of these trees and we're really thinking about how we can use them. And, you know, we could even kind of vote a most valuable tree as the loblolly. Um, just because it's most important in the forestry industry, and at least in the state of Georgia. But we aren't the only thing that would use these trees. Could anybody else think of why these trees may be important? Produce food, the fruits, uh, mast. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so all of these trees can be used for wildlife. And uh, as, as Anna said, they drop the mast, which can be anything from nuts to fruits, to anything else. Um, for example, the American beech has um, nuts that they'll drop off and a lot of wildlife will utilize those as a food source. The um, Eastern redbud has the leguminous fruits that, that uh, animals can use to eat and uh, pollinators can take advantage of their flowers to you know, get a source of nectar and spread around pollinated different flowers. Um, the loblolly pine, it's a really good 
cover area, like a lot of things would hide in that, but also they have nuts that they drop that a lot of small animals will like to eat. And the eastern red cedar, this isn't the best example, but a lot of them grow to be really bushy and thick, so a lot of animals will like to use those as a place to hide in. Also in the winter they get these little berries that a lot of animals would be able to eat. So as you can see that um, we hope that we kind of helped you identify these different trees and as you can see they are not just useful to us but for everything else that lives in the forest. Now we did leave off one tree that's on this list called the northern red oak mm -hmm. and we were, we thought we were going to have one extra group but it's if you look straight back, there's about the biggest oak tree you can see going up, and it's probably the thickest one out there. Um, uh, does anybody have any idea what red oaks can be used for? Kind of related to a beech tree in a way for its uses. Mm-hmm. Uh, ties. Um, same thing with uh, the beech tree. I mean, they can use it for uh, sporting equipment. Um, they can use it for um, construction, um, you know, sub flooring, uh, uh, but yeah, anything construction wise, it's really, really useful. Um, uh, acorns, I know it's acidic enough to do any canning with. Uh, I'm not exactly sure on the northern red oak. I know some acorns are, but I know they're pretty high in tannic acid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as you mentioned, acorns, that's another use um, for wildlife. Um, I know in the winter, whenever everything is kind of dead a lot of things like deer and other things will go through there and if they're under northern red oak they may see a bunch of acorns that they can eat and kind of help them get their calories in so yeah as you can see there all of these trees <coughs> mixed together here can all kind of give wildlife a purpose or, or they they serve a purpose for wildlife whether it be for cover whether it be for food but it really just kind of shows you how the wildlife can use the forest, and the forest can help the wildlife, and it all works together in a big system. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Does anybody have any questions of um, tree identification um, uses? Yeah. What's the tree that has the like caterpillar looking things in the spot, like that are drooping? Cactons. What are they? Aren't those cactons? Yeah, they're they're like a type of seed, Anna. That's right. Yep, like a catkin, and catkins are on the little alder tree. There's we're down by the pond when we did our wildlife cameras. They have those nice little, really like a cone kind of thing. But yeah, that's just a seed piece right there. A lot of oaks do that, just like that. There's little pieces that hang down right now. Yep. Yep. I'd have to see it closer and really kind of look. Good. Identify it exactly, but sugar maples are starting to put those out before they put their little wings out. Sugar maples have those little wings that fall down, you know, for seeds. So, yeah, a lot of trees start that. All right. So now that we've kind of, oh yeah. Oh, I was just gonna add, like that beech tree looks like something might live in there up at the top. Yeah. So yeah. also besides like yeah. food and things like that for wildlife, maybe it can also be shelter. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. To add on that when the trees die, they're forced to degree, but they're mostly there you go. Diameter wise, when they do die, yeah, they can be used for a variety of things. Uh, I do have a question in Georgia, like, do you know anything about what percentage of forest products that you might buy, like, I shop at Kroger or mm -hmm. something like that, would be locally sourced or where? timber and things like that harvested in Georgia where it typically goes that stay local or more national or um, transnational? Well that, that's a difficult question because it really depends on the area of the state that you're in. Um, I know around Valdosta there is a, a lumber mill so a lot of that would be shipped out to you know places right around Valdosta um, but it really depends. I know that uh, pine tree producers in my hometown were complaining a couple of years ago because most of the paper being used in and around South Georgia was actually sourced from Canada. So the forestry industry can be kind of confusing. It depends on who's selling it, who's growing it, who's buying it, and it really is very uh, fluctuatable, I guess would be a word to use, uh, on, on price. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Questions? Any more questions? So now that we've kind of talked about these trees as a thing that wildlife can utilize, uh, we'll, we'll 
talk about uh, in the next lesson about other components of habitat, whether that be these trees, um, proximity to a water source, and other forms of covers. But this is just a way for you to start thinking about how wildlife will use native trees. Good team. Let's give them a round of applause, huh? All right, very good. And I'm going to hit the stop right now.